The set of examples in this video will illustrate how a FPGA block RAM or BRAM functions when the ports are set up with different widths. So here in this example we're going to look at a case where port A is set up with 16-bit entries and port B is set up for 4-bit entries and to work through this example we're going to show a small portion of the BRAM contents and we have to show or to make this easier to follow we're going to show the addresses from both perspective of port A and port B. So on the left we're showing the addresses for port A and since port A has 16-bit entries we have a single address per 16 bits and so in hex we need four hex digits for each one of these so each row in this data array essentially represents a single 16-bit entry and has a single address associated with it. From the perspective of port B, each 4-bit entry has its own address, and so for each row that's being shown in this figure, we really need four separate addresses, one for each 4-bit chunk or 4-bit hex value that is shown within the data section. And while I've already shown the specific addresses here, you could form these if you knew the address just from port A. So comparing 16-bit entries versus 4-bit entries, we have 4-bit four, four entries for every one 16-bit entry, and so we need two additional bits to address one of these four 4-bit four values within the larger 16-bit value. So if port A had an address of hex 30, this would really be in binary equivalent to this. And so to get the equivalent port B addresses, we need to add two additional bits to allow us to get to one of the four different 4-bit four entries. And so if we were to add two bits for the least significant one, we could then break this up and we could see that the least significant four bits would be equivalent to C0, which matches what we show over here. And so this is how you could form these addresses if you, they weren't given to you. So now with this is the base understanding, we want to see how the sequence of axes is shown in the waveforms below, what data would be output as a result of these. And to start with, we're going to look at a case where the BRAM is set in a write-first mode, meaning that any writes to an address happen before any reads from that address. And we have addresses and data in that are going for both port A and for port B. And so we're going to start off with the first address we have here on the first rising edge of the clock. We're reading from address 33 of port A, so we go up to address 33 from port A and we see that the contents of that are hex FEDC and so we would be reading FEDC at this point and this would happen since the block RAM is a synchronous element the value can only change at the rising edge of the clock and so this value would have to stay the same throughout this entire clock cycle. Looking at port B we're looking for address C6 in this case and if we go over to the addresses that we've labeled, we can see that C6 corresponds to a data value of hex 2. And so within this clock cycle for port B, we're reading out a value of hex 2. Now we're going to look at the next clock cycle. And here we want to see, since this is set up in write first mode, we want to see are any writes happening. And if we look at port B, we see on the rising edge of the clock, the write enable bit is set so we want to take care of this right first so if we look the address is c1 so if we go over to c1 we can find that that's currently a 9 but we're writing a value of b to it so this 9 essentially is going to take on the value of b and then we're going to also be reading from this address so during this clock cycle since we just wrote a B and we're in write first mode we're going to be reading out a B and then we're going to go back and look at port A port A is looking at address 30 and so this needs all 16 bits and we have to remember that we did a write beforehand so we're going to use the updated version of this so during this window here we're going to have a value BA B8 that we have read out of this address. Now moving on to the next clock edge and the next set of addresses. Again, since this is write first, we're going to look if any writes are occurring. So in this case, we see that port A is writing. It's writing to address 32. And so the entire contents at this address are going to be replaced with the 0x9753 that are being written. 
And since we're also reading this address at the same time, we're going to read out this value. We'll now look at port B. Port B is reading from CF. That is a value of hex F. So we're just going to fill that in. And now we're going to the last cycle here. And if we look in this cycle, in this clock edge, there aren't any write enables. And so we just need to read the contents. So for port A, we're going to go look at address 33. And we can see that that's the same value it had at the start. So this is this hex FEDC. And then for port B, we're looking at address C8. And C8 now has the, con the value of 3 since it was written in a previous cycle. So we need to use the updated value or the current value. And so that has a value of hex 3. And so this takes our care of our example if we're looking at the BRAM being in write first mode. We're now going to look at the same sequence of addresses, assuming that the BRAM is in read first mode. And while this won't change a lot, it will change a few things. So in the first rising edge of the clock, we weren't writing anything before, so we're just going to read the same value. So we're going to go look at address 33 and see that that still has the value of FEDC we found in the first case. And similarly for port B, we're looking at address C6, and we can see that this has the value of hex 2. Now we're going to the next cycle, and before we were doing the write first, since we were in a write first mode, now we're in a read first mode, so we're going to do the reads first. So for port A, we're looking at address hex 30, and we can see that this has a value of BA98. For port B, we're looking at the address C1. When we go to C1, we see that this has a value of hex 9. And then since port B is also has the write enable high, we also need to write the value of B2 address C1. And so that means this 9 is going to become B. But because we're in a read first, we did the read before we changed the value to B. And so we read the old value, so to speak. Now moving on to the next address. So for port A, we have an address of 32. And so we would read out the current contents of address 32, which is hex 7654. And then we could also go down to port B and do the read portion. And so we're looking at address CF. Address CF has the value of hex F. Now we want to go take care of or see if there's any writes. Port A is doing a write and it's writing to address 32. And so the value in 32 is going to take on its new value of 9753. And now for the last address, for port A, we're going to go look at address 33 and its value hasn't changed. So we're still going to read out the FE. DC, and then for port B, we're going to go look at address C8, and we see that that now has the recently written value of hex 3. And so there are two areas here where the value changed from the previous example due to the fact that we're not, we did this in a read first mode instead of a write first mode. And these two values were the values of hex 9 from port B and the value of hex 7654 that we read from port A. This concludes the walkthrough of accessing a BRAM with different width ports in both read and write first mode.